Good morning, good morning. Welcome to today's coffee chat. Mmm. Ooh, I'm trying a new roast. This is beautiful. It's the Peruvian one by Salt Spring Island Coffee. Ooh. Yum. Okay, well, anyways, I'm not talking about coffee roast today. Today, as you can see by my beautiful poinsettia here, we're deep in the holidays. And so every single client I'm having this discussion with right now about how to handle the holidays, how to make healthy choices during the holiday season, how to navigate it. And so I know that that's what you've got on your mind today and what you would like me to talk about. So. That's what I'm going to be talking about today, how to survive the holidays. Now, I first want to address that word. You saw I got the finger quotes going for survive because, oh, I really hate that term. And words are powerful. And so I really want to address that, that, oh, please stop using that idea of surviving the holidays. The holidays are a time to celebrate. They're a time for indulgence. They're a time to enjoy. They're a time to connect with families and coworkers and colleagues and friends and other loved ones. And yes, it can be a complicated emotional time and a busy time and an exhausting time, but it's not something that we survive. And to load the sentence that way. Oh, I just, I really don't like it. So even though we see that in magazine articles and blog posts and that about surviving the holidays, please change that phrase in your head. What I'm going to be talking about today though, is how to enjoy some of the indulgences of the holidays without the guilt and without gaining a whole bunch of weight how to both still be making some good choices for your body while also enjoying the holidays. That's what I'm going to be talking about today, not surviving. And before I get into specific tips, I think I really need to take this opportunity to share with you my, you could call it my food philosophy, but really it's what I know to be true. And that's that food has three important roles in our lives. The first role, of course, is that food is fuel for our bodies, right? That's what you expect me as a dietitian to be sharing with you about. That's what we hear so much about. And that's absolutely food is an essential and super important role for fuel for our bodies to be able to be healthy, to have that high level of performance that we're looking to achieve in our lives. Food also has a second role, and that's that it's a source of pleasure. You know, the fact that we human beings, when food arrives on our taste buds, that we derive a sense of pleasure from it, to me, that means that we're meant to. So there's no need to have guilt. Like I hate this whole concept of guilty pleasure. No, not into that at all. The fact that we derive pleasure from foods arriving in our mouth means that we are meant to. No need to have pleasure, to have guilt around that. Then the third role that food has is that it's also a way that we connect with other people. You know, I love to geek out and explore other cultures, and particularly their food habits. And what I've noticed is that every single culture, current ones, past ones, people gather together to share food, particularly to uh, celebrate, to mark important milestones, holidays in life. And, you know, from culture to culture, the specific milestones or holidays are variable. And of course, the foods they're sharing change from culture to culture. But it's consistent that every single culture shares food. People gather together to share food. So that to me tells us, tells me that, that we human beings are meant to do that, that that's important for us. You know, we're social creatures. We are more than just our physical bodies, right? No matter what your faith is, what your, what your foundations are, we recognize that we're mind, we're body, but we're also social creatures. We have that, that spirit, that soul, that social nature, whatever you want to call it, we're more than just our physical selves. And so food has more than just that fuel for the body role. It nourishes all aspects of who we are. And so to me, healthy eating means finding a balance amongst all three of those. And this is no more evident than during the holidays. And so what I recommend is how to navigate the holidays means you might have a slightly different shift in the balance amongst 
those three rules for food. It might be a little heavier towards the pleasure, towards the connecting with people, and that's okay. What we want to do is not ignore the fuel for our body completely or have these huge wide oscillations where we're eating super, super strict and isolating and ignoring all of the pleasure and then, whoa, throwing it all out and doing nothing but pleasure and indulgence and then whoosh, way back in January, super strict again to punish yourself. That's the cycle that is super destructive. But during the holidays, what you will probably be doing and what I think is healthy for us is to have a little bit of a shift towards more pleasure, but without dropping that fuel for our bodies completely. So what are specific practical tips for doing that? The first is to not drop some of those important foundational things. Those are foundational aspects that are good fuel for the body. One is to maintain your hydration. Please keep drinking your fluids, having water, having herbal teas. If you're looking for something warm this time of year, green tea, white tea, herbal teas are a beautiful choice. Stick with plain old water is always a great choice. Please keep up your hydration. And if you are indulging in some more alcohol this time of year, you'll want to have extra hydration too because alcohol does dehydrate you. So make sure you're keeping well hydrated in this time of year. It's a dry type of year. We're in a lot of, uh, a lot of dry, you know, the heat's on in our buildings. It's super drying. Um, so keep yourself well hydrated to give yourself good energy and, and keep that health flowing. Second tip is to keep up those vegetables. Yes. There's a lot of extra treats this time of year, which are fine, but what we wanna do is make sure that we still have that good foundation of all those vegetables getting in. You know, at your lunches, at dinner, at your healthy snacks, you know, in between the events, have that foundation of getting lots of veggies in there. Have half of your plate, half of what you're eating being vegetables. It's also an important time of year to be having those because all the other indulgences are creating some extra inflammation in our bodies and vegetables are our antioxidant superpowers. So we want to be adding lots of those to be balancing things out. And you know what, if you're at say an event, you can still get that foundation of vegetables in, in many different events. If it's say a buffet, you know, include lots of the vegetables, have half of what you're eating that night be vegetables, whether it's salads, whether it's hot vegetables, pick and choose from what there's on offer, have those as half of what you eat. If you're going to a potluck, hey, why don't you bring a vegetable centric dish, a vegetable side dish, a beautiful salad. It can be as simple as some cut up veggies and some dip does not have to be fancy, but you know what? You can have that role of making sure there are at least some vegetables present there. And then when you're at that potluck again, having half of your, your plate being those vegetables. So having the vegetables, keeping your hydration up, those are the foundational things to keep in place even during the holiday season. Some things that are also healthy habits that you know, you may need to do a little bit of compromising on, a little bit of adjusting while in the holiday season. The first one is sleep. You know, with all these extra social events, there might be some late nights, nights that are later than usual. And so on those nights that are in between, please get some extra sleep. You know, get those hours of sleep in because not only is it important for your health in that moment, but also when we're underslept, we crave the carbs and the sugary foods. That's just the way the body works. And so we don't want in this time when there's extra treats around to be having extra cravings for them because we're tired. So, you know, if your usual routine is to, you know, sit down in front of the TV or turn on the Netflix for a little while before you go to bed, skip that step, you know, head straight to bed, get an extra hour of sleep in on your nights in between the social engagements. So sleep is an important one to do a little adjusting, adapting to try to get as much as you can in. The other foundational piece is physical activity, exercise. You know, you might be having more social engagements and so you're skipping some of your physical activity that you do. Well, see if there's other creative ways you can at least get a little bit in. You might not be able to get your full workout in, your regular class in, but maybe you can do some creativity and get at least a little something. You know, can you go for a walk at lunchtime? It, can you, uh, for example, on Monday night, I had an event 
that I went to a beautiful buffet dinner, but usually I meet with my run group and have an intense workout that day. Well, that was exactly the same time that my run group meets that was the start of the beautiful buffet dinner event. So you know what I did? I snuck into the gym and I caught, not snuck, but I snuck, you know, in my schedule, I snuck in a little half hour workout at the gym. You know, was it as intense as I usually get on a Monday night? No, but it's better than nothing, right? So it still got half an hour of some physical activity in, in my day. So are there some kind of sneaky moments in your day where you can get a little bit in, you know, be creative. And even if you're going to visit family um, over the holidays, you know, can you get a family walk in? Can you have a family, you know, go snowshoeing as a family or tobogganing and, you know, walking up the sled back up that hill is a lot of exercise. Uh, my, when I used to go to Calgary to visit my brother, he and I would do a little jog together. And to tell the truth, in all the craziness and all the play ways were, you know, pulled in so many directions during the holidays, that was actually the only time that he and I got a chance to to visit just the two of us. And so that jog, I mean, it was some physical activity, but it was also an opportunity to connect him and I. So I really value some of those little jogs that we had. Now, if you're gonna be traveling to a resort, you know, do walk the golf course if you're gonna be golfing. Go for a swim in that beautiful ocean or that beautiful pool. Um, check out the gym at the facility. Uh, maybe go for a walk in your surroundings. You, you know, take a tennis lesson. Right? There's so many active ways that you can involve some activity in your vacation, even if it's you know throwing you off your typical workout game. It'll include some physical activity, be creative, even if it's not at your usual level. But instead of going from your usual level to zero, get something in, right? Same with if you usually attend a number of classes, you know, like jazzercise or your your TRX class or whatever it might be and you know they're going to be canceling them over the holidays how can you still get in and do a little gym pass you know can you do you know pay for a drop-in session at the community center and do a little circuit in the gym there you know visit the community pool and do a drop-in and get a swim in be creative get think outside the box and outside of your rigidity of your regular schedule and get some physical activity in some is still better than none Okay, so we hit that point over the head. We got the sleep, we got the exercise. And here's the thing with the treats and the sugar. One is to adjust your day-to-day -day habits. Reduce the other sugar that you're having in the day, in your week, so that you make room for a little bit of the treats. I shared in a previous video the top places, the top foods that I find that sugar is hiding amongst my clients, and I'll include a link to that video below so that you can take a peek at your own eating habits and see like, oh yeah, I have, I have that that, that vanilla yogurt. I didn't realize that it was a source of sugar. You know, maybe I'll switch to plain during the holidays so that I'm decreasing the amount of hidden sugar, kind of background sugar that I'm having so that I can make room for those holiday treats, right? So it's about doing some adjustments in that way. Also, maybe if you have some kind of treats and indulgences that you typically have during the year, say no to those so that you can say yes to the special holiday ones. Right? Maybe, you know, your colleague always brings in the, the big box store muffins at the morning meeting on Wednesdays. And so, and you usually have one. You know what? Say no that day at that meeting because you know that night you're going to be building a gingerbread house with your kiddo and that you're going to have some, some gingerbread and some decorative candy that night. You know, that only happens, you only build a gingerbread house with your kiddo once a year. And hey, they don't stay kids for long, so there's only going to be so many years that you can do that, right? That's special. That's a good time to have a little bit of sugar. You know, the morning coffee, the morning muffin from the big box store that your colleague brings in, it's pretty easy to say no to. When it really comes down to with those treats is it's not about restricting yourself. It's about being picky in the good way. It's about demanding the best and only having the best, right? What will bring you the most pleasure? And especially those seasonal treats, the treats that only come out at these holiday times, those are the ones to indulge in. You know, the ones you can have all year round, let those go. 
You don't need those ones this time of year because there's the special ones for the holidays. And that's how you don't end up with your regular amount of treats plus the holiday ones, which is the problem. No, you wanna be swapping them out. And so for example, I was at that beautiful buffet that I mentioned on, on Monday night this week. And you know, they, they had all, oh, I mean, the food at this location is always stellar. They had beautiful different salads. They had beautiful hot foods and then a beautiful dessert buffet. And as much as I talk about decreasing the sugar in your life, and I absolutely believe in that, I want most people to be having very little sugar, I do have a sweet tooth. And so I, I love indulging in it, in treats on occasionally. And because I do day in, day out, have removed all the hidden sugar and I have low sugar, then I have that room for those beautiful pleasure things. And so what did I choose at that holiday event? Well, I did, I had my half plate of veggies. I had beautiful salads. They had beautiful mixed vegetables in the hot vegetable section. Half of what I ate for the entrees was, was vegetables. I had some beautiful protein choices and I kept pretty minimal on, on the carb foods, on the starch foods because I knew I wanted to have some of the, the desserts. And so, you know, I said no to the potato salad. I said no to the pasta salad. I said no to the bread, to the rice. You know, I can get those any time of year. That's not that special. I also said no to the, the Yorkshire pudding. They had Yorkshire pudding there. It's not really my thing. So that might be somebody's thing and that's what you're going to indulge in. Good for you. But that's yeah, not my thing, so I said no to that. And it's pretty easy to pass that up because it's not about restricting and saying I can't have it. It's that, yeah, the amount of pleasure I get from that, pretty minimal, where there's going to be some rock and pleasure stuff coming up. So I had minimal starch foods, minimal carbs during the, the entree part, the, the appetizer and entree part of the meal, and then I went in there to the dessert buffet. And you know what? There were things that... You know, I'm sure they were delicious, but you can get them all year round, right? There were chocolate chip cookies, there were brownies, there was carrot cake. I love all those things, but you know, I can get that any time of year. But what there was, was a Christmas, what I call Christmas pudding with the warm toffee sauce. And that, oh, that is what I grew up having at my granny's house at Christmas time, at my parents' house at Christmas time. And we don't, now that we don't gather as a full large family, we don't do that anymore. And so I, when I saw that as an opportunity, it just took me right back to my childhood Christmases. And so of course, that's what I chose. Oh, and it was delicious. It was absolutely delicious. So nostalgic for me. And really, I won't have that again this year. And it might be many years before I get an opportunity to have that again. So absolutely I had it and there's no need for guilt because there, it had room for that in my life. And so because I ha make the healthy choices day in, day out, that little bit of indulgence, our bodies can handle that. So that's how I balanced that beautiful night without having a detrimental effect on my health. And so I want you to use those same techniques so that there's no guilt, there's no negative effect on health, but I got to enjoy some beautiful holiday favorites. I want you to be able to do that too. So in summary, what those tips are for balancing the, the pleasure, the connecting, the holiday favorites with also good fuel for your body is to make sure that you're keeping your hydration up, make sure you're having your vegetables, get some sleep, be creative with your exercise, think outside the box so you can still include some decrease the hidden sugar in your life and get rid of some of those day in, day out, regular time of the year treats so that you have room for the special holiday ones. Think what will bring me the most pleasure and what is the most special to me. Those are my tips for having a wonderful holiday season. And so have a great week. Have a full holiday season. Enjoy all the parties. And I, oh, before I sign off, oh my goodness, I almost forgot to say, please, if you like today's video, let me know. Click the thumbs up button below. And if you have not yet, please subscribe. Hit the subscribe button and the little notification bell so that you always know when I've posted a new video so that you can come join me in my kitchen over a cup of delicious coffee and chat 
casually in this way about food, nutrition, busting myths, cool stuff I'm seeing in the grocery store that I'm excited about, and also cookbook reviews. Now I'll sign off and wish you to help you have a wonderful week and I'll see you back here next Thursday morning.